So welcome back to Imperium Gaming and this 2000 point Maelstrom of War game. We are playing the mission The Deadlock. This is the one where you start with uh, six tactical objectives turn one, dropping down to five, four, three, etc. Uh, and also from the beginning of turn three onwards, to use a command point, it costs double. So we now have the objectives in place. There is one here, one here. One next to the Fortress of Redemption, and again another one on the other side of the Fortress of Redemption. A fifth one down here by the Bastion, and then panning back and across, one lone objective here. So in this mission, we have a Fortress of Redemption sat in the middle of the battle grid. The Ultramarines are here to try and reclaim it. It's been abandoned for some time. It's ready to be used. It has a supporting bastion. It has a sky shield landing pad. They're all here. However, the Night Lords have got wind that Gulliman himself may be coming to this planet and they're on their way. They're thinking they may be able to take the head of the new leader of the Imperium. So this is the Night Lord's Force for 2,000 points. We have a battalion, so six command points, uh, one of which has been used for a Gift of Chaos. So leading the army, we have a Demon Prince. Uh, he's the Prince of Corn with two Malefic Talons, and he's got Talisman of Burning Blood, which allows him to move, advance, shoot, and assault, and reroll the charge range. So if he can get in, there's a chance that he might do some damage. Second in command is a Chaos Lord, with a jump pack and lightning claws. Then we have, oh, and those lightning claws are the uh, claws of the Black Hunt, uh, so that's another relic or artifact of chaos. In troops, we have five uh, squads of chaos space marines. Four of them have five in their number, one has a sixth member to them. And we have power swords across all of the sergeants, bar one, this one being the exception. Uh, we have three dedicated transports. And we have a Deradeo Dreadnought, a Xiphon, a Leviathan, and a Sicaran. And I'll apologise now for the sound of snoring in the background, because that is the old English sheepdog. So, any farting or snoring will be him. So let's have a look at the enemy. So here we have 2,000 points of Ultramarine Space Marines. Alex, tell us what you've got. So it's a battalion detachment and a single Lord of War choice. Leading the army is Rabout Gilman. Uh, then the battalion consists of four squads of intercessors, all as they come. Very nice. Also bright rifles. Uh, we've got a captain in Gravis armour. I've got two lieutenants. A Primaris Ancient, and he has got the standard of the Emperor's Ascendant as my relic choice. What does that do? That is plus one to their last stand ability, so they get up on a three up and have one last pop. And they automatically pass morale techs, as well as enemy units within six inches have minus one leadership. Okay. They've also got a he squad. He has to die. <laughs> got a squad of five Hellblasters. Yeah. Uh, behind them, got the Redemptor Dreadnought with the... Plasma cannon, Gatling gun, uh, the assault grenade launchers, and a big fist. Okay. Then we've got Storm Talon. It's got two LAS cannons and a twin assault cannon. And then lastly, we have the Repulsor. And that is equipped with a boatload of guns. It's got a twin LAS cannon, a LAS Talon, an onslaught Gatling cannon, three Storm Bolters, two assault grenade launchers. That's just too much. It's too much shooty. I don't like that. And it can also hold 10 Primaris models. That has to die. That thing there. Must kill. Must kill. Must kill. Must kill. Alright, thanks Alex. Let's deploy and then we'll see who's going to be going first. So the Night Lord's got to choose which side of the battlefield they're going to be and it's this side. 
it is dawn of war deployment uh, so let's get straight on with deploying the troops and we'll come back and see how the game will start so the battle lines have been drawn and the ultramarines have positioned themselves all the way along this backfield but with a concentration here you've got Gulliman holding the centre with his big bubble of support to the rest of his army within this vehicle here you have all of these guys I don't know whether they're going to be pushing forward or just acting as a firebase who knows so everything for the ultramarines is on the table and facing them there's two squads of five in a rhino there the Xiphon, another vehicle with a squad of five and the Demon Prince. And then to try and counter this lot, we have a, a bubble of nastiness here. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So that's deployment. So all that's left to do is to see who goes first. So we are adopting the rules that you roll a dice, uh, but whoever deployed or finished deployment first which was the Ultramarines, gets plus one. So let's roll off. I've got a four, five up to a six. That's the choice of the Ultramarines. What do you want to do? Go second? Nah, second? Nah, nah. First? I'll, go, I'll take first. <laughs> All right, then. Let's, uh, let's see what happens as we go into turn one. So objectives for the Space Marines on turn one. Hold the line. So that's three units in their own deployment zone and no others well there is nothing else that's a, a given that's an easy point defend objective six just panning across there you go all they've got to do is stay alive until the end of the night lord's turn and then they'll score that one uh, secure objective one and secure objective five well there's objective five there's objective one that's possible they could get both then we've got Emperor's Retribution, so that's to take an objective that's already held by the opponent. That's not going to happen this turn, but could in the future. And Psychological Warfare. So kill things and make them fail a morale test. I think it's unlikely, but we'll see. So let's get straight into movement. So at the end of the Ultramarines Turn 1 movement phase, uh, one squad have moved forward and are holding objective one. Was that an advanced move as well? Yes. And then we've got a few models have got out of the vehicle at the back. But are they all out? Now? They're all out now. Everything yeah. is out and castled in the corner. The Storm Talon has moved across, ready to lay down some fire across here towards the forces of chaos. And then did these guys move at all? They sort of rejiggered a bit just to be in the room. Just a little really. bit of shuffling going on. Um, and they need to hold on to that. So that's the end of the movement phase. Let's go straight into shooting as there are no psychics. So the first part of the shooting phase, very quickly, uh, there are three command points being used. I'm guessing it's the three that Gulliman himself brings to the table. Is doing an orbital bombardment, centering right down here. So if he rolls a one, it'll only affect the Sicaran, but anything other than a one and it will catch all three units. So it's a five. So it's not going to be enough to reach anything else because there is nothing else other than this, which is about eight inches away. Uh, so that's going to catch all three. So what does that do, Alex? So on a four plus per vehicle, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. Mortal wounds. Yes, okay. so we'll go for the front one first. So the Leviathan. So he does not. Uh, and the Rodeo. He does not, this is what I've spent so far. And then the, the Sakaran. He doesn't. he doesn't as well. Do you want to use a reroll for any of these? Well, in theory, for the one on the Sakara. Yeah, I'll go for that one, yeah. So I might as well try to reroll that one. Yes, so I've got yes. it on that one. And it's D3, D3 mortal wounds. So two, two mortal, mortal wounds. wounds. Anyways. Okay. Not bad. So, just interrupting the shooting phase, uh, the Ultramarines have realised that the Derodeo Dreadnought, with its Hellfire Veil, is boosting around a 5-up invulnerable save to all of these units here. So they've targeted it. The Hellblasters have opened fire and they've brought it down to 8 wounds already. However, 
Two of them got eaten, even with their rerolls. The still yeah. got eaten. But they did get to shoot again because as they died, the banner allowed them to fire again. So, yeah, good start. And that's just the first part of the shooting. Let's see what ha else happens. So at the end of the shooting phase, everything unloaded to try and destroy the Derodeo. Uh, with some jammy five up invuln saves, uh, it's still alive on three wounds. It is diminished, so it's not going to be quite as effective as it could be. But that is the end of the shooting phase and in fact the end of the turn. So let's just come around and have a look and confirm how many points were scored. There's no first blood achieved. So hold the line, you scored that. Mm -hmm. uh, defend objective six, you could, oh, I'm in the wrong place, you could get that next turn mm -hmm. or my half of the turn. You have secured objective one, you didn't go for five and you haven't forced a morale test. So are you going to uh, discard anything at all? Yeah, for our test. Okay, so good start to the game. So these are the objectives for the Night Lords. Priority orders received. So this is the Warlord to score an objective. He needs to assassinate, kill a character. He's not going to do that, so I'll probably throw that one away. However, I've got defend objective two, defend objective four, Secure and defend objective three and area denial. So just flipping across, secure and defend objective three. I've already got that. Objective two, I'm holding that. And objective four is there. So I'm thinking I'm gonna drop the guys out from this vehicle and move the vehicle forward or the other way around, one of the two. And then area denial, Right there in the middle, that's the centre point of the table. So I've already got no one within six inches. And if I can kill these guys, that'll be D3 points. Quite happy with that. So let's go straight into the movement and try and kill some guys in blue, but not Night Lords. So after movement, the Leviathan has moved forward. Uh, it's bringing its Grav Flux Bombard within range of these guys. And these two vehicles have stayed still. The Rhino with its contents have moved around. And then over here, the Demon Prince Warlord has jumped across here, trying to keep himself hidden. So from here, nothing can see him at the moment, although there is a flyer. And the Rhino stayed put, and the contents jumped out to try and secure objective four. And then over here, everybody jumped out. So the two squads inside the Rhino, plus the Rhino moving forward, the Zyphons come across because this squad has to die. I have to stop them from defending objective six. And then finally, the Chaos Lord with his jump pack has dropped down there. So he's gonna try and pull off a cheeky uh, charge in a minute. So let's go straight into the shooting phase as there are no Psychers in the Night Lords either. So at the end of the shooting phase, I fired everything I could into here. Uh, did nothing, but then the Xiphon unloaded and has killed three. Managed to get some mortal wounds with the Soltaker missiles. Over here, I'm killing the Hellblasters. There's only one left, but that banner has got them to shoot, and he kept rolling to shoot as they died. And the Derodeo is now on one wound, and I had a jammy five up invul save that kept him alive. Then the Leviathan opened up and wiped the squad there so that I've got the area denial D3 in a minute. Um, I did fire quite a lot up at the Storm Talon, but he made his saves, so no damage done. Uh, and finally, did do five wounds to the Redemptor Dreadnought, but not enough to degrade it. So that's the end of the shooting phase. We have one assault to try for, so let's have a quick look and see what happens as we go into the charge phase. So this is the only charge to do, so the Chaos Lord is going to try and reach these guys. First of all, he has to weather the Overwatch. So two rapid fire. No so hits. So no hits. He needs a nine to reach, and he's in. <laughs> this is going to be an important fight to do, because if I can kill these two, we will stop the area defend. So now the Lord's in, let's start with his attacks. He has five attacks. Hitting on twos, so they're all hits. He's strength five, so he's wounding on threes. 
but he's re-rolling failed wounds because he's got claws of the black hunt which are effectively upgraded lightning claws so we have four wounds at ap minus three nah. and they're d3 for each one yeah so three oh, six nine ten eleven wounds so he's killed those and that is defend objective six lost for the ultramarines so at the end of turn one for the night lords we've started to defend objective four three and two we've managed to stop the defend objective six for the ultramarines we have secured objective three for one point we've scored first blood for two points and now we have d3 for area denial and that's two points i'll take that so that's four points to two at the end of turn one let's now go into turn two for the ultramarines So here we have the objectives for the Ultramarines on turn two. So they still hold Emperor's Retribution. They've got behind enemy lines, which is going to be a struggle for this turn. Uh, defend objective six that they're going to throw away at the end of this turn. Uh, secure objective five. That's the objective that's just there. And then advance. Now, Alex tells me that everything's going to be moving forward now anyway. So he should get out of this period, this area here. So that's the line effectively. So if you can get everything forward, and he's got objective five to go for, that'll be interesting. So straight into movement for turn two Ultramarines. So this is the view from the Night Lord side of the table as everything in the Ultramarines has moved forward. This squad uh, did an advance move. So they're now gonna score objective five, which is cool. Uh, the Ancient and the Lieutenant have advanced moved, but the Hellblaster didn't need to. And the Captain at the back also advanced moved. However, the Storm Talon is now in hover mode because he wanted to be able to stay within the bubble for re-rolls from Gulliman. Uh, and this managed to get out of the, uh, the deployment zone without needing to advance, so he's gonna be able to use all of its weapons. There's gonna be a lot, a lot of shooting. Everything in the Ultramarine army is here. There's nothing else anywhere else. This is going to hurt. Wow, what a lot of shooting. So the entire army fired at the Leviathan. Yep, he's still alive. Four wounds. Every last cannon that went through his invulnerable save only did one wound. Even with a reroll and a burning of a command point. And then to add insult to injury, Gulliman didn't manage to regrow that command point. So down to four command points for the Ultramarines. This thing is on four wounds. So that's the end of the shooting phase. Is there going to be an assault phase? <laughs> so potential charge phase. Is there, isn't there? Are you going to charge me with this dreadnought? Yeah. How much do you need? At least a ten. Let's have a look. A 10 will get him in an inch, so okay, 10 so is what I need. roll your charge. Gonna use command point, okay? So, needing a four, oh, he's, he's in. in. He's but in. I've got some overwatch first, <laughs> so let's uh, see if I can do any damage. I'll come back in a sec. See so, starting with the overwatch, I would really like to fire both hell flamers. Unfortunately, it's a 10 inch charge, so they've only got an eight inch range, so it's not happening. So we'll start off with the Gravflux Bombard. How many shots is it? It's two shots. Six is to hit. I'm gonna burn a command point because this thing can do some damage. Uh, try and get a six. Yes! So he hits with the six. This is strength nine, toughness eight. Eight, so threes to wound. I've got the wound, so Graph Flux Bombard is AP minus five and does five damage. So that brings him down to three wounds. And then we've got a Butcher Cannon Array. So that's eight shots, looking for sixes. We've got one. This is strength eight, looking for a four. Didn't get, but I've used my command points. So that's the Overwatch and now this Repulsor, is it a Repulsor? Redemptor. Redemptor, Dreadnought, will charge through and get to attack me first. So with the damage done in Overwatch, 
the Redemptive Dreadnought is hitting on fives now. So let's go for it. Two hits. Marked for death there, look. So strength. It's 14. Strength 14, so it's threes, because I'm tough and safe. So one wound. Oh, you're into command, you're wrong. Well, hey, here we go. Still only one wound. Do you get? Do you grow that one back, by the way, with your Gulliman rule? I do not. You don't? I'm down to two. So Hellforged Leviathan Dreadnought has a four-up invulnerable in close combat, which it has made. So now it gets to attack back with four attacks. I'm on four wounds still. If he'd done one more, it would have dropped me down to hitting on fours, but my weapon skill is still threes. So I hit twice, and I am strength eight, so I'm wounding on fours. So I've got one wound through. And your save, sir, is a straight up save, Ooh, okay. is made. So let me just pause for a minute whilst I take a think. I was just thinking about whether I want to use any command points for any stratagems, but um, this guy here is brilliant at shooting, not so much in close combat. So I'm going to leave him where he is for now, uh, and that is the end of this turn. So let's have a quick look at the points, so we'll come back in a second. So looking at the cards, uh, Alex is going to get rid of Defend Objective 6, as expected, but he has scored Objective 5 and Advance, so that scores him two more, point, two more points. So at the bottom of the first half of turn two, the Ultramarines are on four and the Night Lords are on three. Let's go straight across to the Forces of Chaos now. Just a quick addendum. During Alex's turn, I defended objective four, three and two, scoring another six points. So I'm now on nine points to four. I feel the cards are being kind to me at the moment. So I've got Secure Objective 1 twice. We'll come back to that one. We've got Secure Objective 6 and Defend Objective 6. Objective 6 is the one over here that I just cleared the intercessors off. And I've got all of these guys here. So someone's going to come across and take it, even if they don't take it this turn. And then I've also got Behind Enemy Lines. So to score that, I have to have at least one unit within their deployment zone, or three for more points. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not going to get three, but I've already got one. I've got the Chaos Lord, hidden in behind here, who's going to be starting to move this way, so he might as well move in behind the cover and come down and score me that. Now we saw we had Secure Objective 1. That's there. Look what's on the other side of the building. Demon Prince Warlord. Yes, I can come in. I can score two points if I can kill them. And then Rabuti Gulliman will carve me a new, yeah, a new something. Won't go into that. Um, and, <laughs> and we'll see what happens then. So let's do my movement. So at the end of the turn two movement phase for the Night Lords, the Leviathan has fallen back out of combat. I need to kill this Dreadnought. I had a squad in reserve that have walked on from the edge here. They're going to add their weight of fire in on this squad of intercessors. The squad that were in this rhino have jumped out. They're going to rapid fire and assault. Uh, the rhino is going to lend some fire support. This squad that were holding this objective are moving round. Might as well put some more small arms fire into there. The demon has jumped over the cross with an advance move to get to there because he can assault after he advances. And then the Xiphon has moved around. He's going to start trying to put some wounds in on Gurleyman because he is now the closest model. And then finally, the Chaos Lord has moved through there. And I rolled six for the advance move. And this vehicle is now securing and starting to defend objective six. Really pleased with how that went. Let's now shoot some stuff. So we've done some small arms fire here and we're managing to pull down some of these intercessors. So now we're going to jump across to the Xiphon firing at Gulliman. So first of all we have four shots from twin LAS cannons. So we have three hits. Strength nine, so threes to wound. We have three wounds at AP minus three, but he has a three up invulnerable save. Failed one. I will. Point. You use the command point. Command point. Yes. Yes. Do I get a command ball back? 
Finally. And he does. So free use of the command point there. And then the Soul Taker missiles do two shots because it's D3. This is strength seven, so threes to wound again. So two wounds. This is at AP minus two, so you're still looking for your three up in vault. No, two. No. How many so, wounds? And that does two wounds. Two wounds. If I had rolled fives or sixes on the rolls to wounds, those would have been mortal wounds. Lovely. So now we're at the bottom of the shooting phase, turn two for the Night Lords. And the Sikarans, Las Cannons, made short work of the Redemptor Dreadnought that was there. Shot out one guy from this squad, no, two guys, and wounded another one. And I've done a couple of wounds to Gulliman. And again, I've not managed to damage the Storm Talon. However, the Demon Prince did fire his Warp Bolter in and killed two of the Marines there. So that was cool. Um, I do have two assaults to do, so we'll, uh, we'll just finish this bit and then uh, we'll go into the charge phase. So after the overwatch has been completed, uh, took down one of the Space Marines here and no wounds done to the Demon Prince who has charged the squad and the Lieutenant. So we'll go straight into that one first. So the Demon Prince is attacking first and he's putting four attacks on the squad and four attacks onto the Lieutenant. So four attacks onto the Lieutenant. So I'm hitting on twos. So I've hit with all of them and I am strength seven. So wounded on threes. So I've got two that have gone through and I'm gonna expend one command point to bring it down to two to try and re-roll the wound. So yeah, three that have gone through. This is AP minus two. Fives. Oh, hello. Oh, that's two wounds taken then. Yes, so one dobs. Okay, so this is on the lieutenant. Oh, lieutenant, sorry, yeah. okay. So he's still alive. Yeah, he's got three left. And then on to the guys themselves, four attacks, so all of them hit. Again, threes to wound, that's better. Four wounds, AP minus two. That's two so, die. So two die, two wounds each. So then it's your strikes back. That's six, do you reckon? So see Looking for your re-rolls. No, they're not. No, no to get back up. Ah. Um, so two are dead and they four even fight. Okay. Uh, so uh, the sergeant. Yep. Uh, one hit. Oh, sorry, you didn't kill him in, so. So you reroll. Still one no. hit. So just the one hit. Uh, a a wound. wound. So three up. Uh, I take a wound. Mm. Down to eight wounds for the Demon Prince. Uh, the Lieutenant. He's got a power sword. Uh, Hits once, but re rolling. So two mm. hits. Still fives, I think. Re roll. So just the one, and that's AP minus three. Yes. Okay, so my five up demon save, which I've made. So I'm comfortable with that. Just very quickly, we did realize that after we'd uh, finished filming that, the Lieutenant had another attack, which we've done off camera, but he didn't actually manage to cause a wound. So at the end of the game, these guys beat each other with their bolters, but didn't actually do any damage. Uh, no leadership concerns there. Uh, but there is one here, so this lieutenant, or sorry, this sergeant that's left in this squad uh, is leadership 10 because of the fact that they're ultramarines. They've taken four wounds, and there's minus one because of the demon prince. So on roll of a six, he will die, and he does. Nah, nah, nah. Space means. Space, space means re roll. Another six. Oh! There we go. It does say mark for death, look. God damn it! So we'll take that. So at the end of that turn, I've started to defend Objective 6, but I have scored Objective 6 for one point, and I've got behind enemy lines. So that pulls me up to 11 points, um, and in the Space Marine turn, I will score Defend Objective 6, so that'll be another point. I couldn't get Objective 1, because that's here, and I needed to kill the Lieutenant as well to do that. So that is the final closing part for turn 2. So, cards for the Space Marines. Uh, they've still got behind enemy lines. They've just pulled Secure Objective 6, which is that one right down there, so that isn't going to happen. Um, and Defend Objective 5 and Emperor's Retribution. Now, this is really interesting. So, Emperor's Retribution is he needs to take an objective from me. 
Now we're both objective secured, but I've got four models to his three. So technically I'm holding objective five. So if he can kill that squad, he will have taken that objective off of me. So he will win that. And as long as he can then hold on to it in through my turn, he will then score defend objective five for two points. That's cool. So end of the movement phase for the Ultramarines. Uh, and before we just sum up where everything's gone, uh, just a point, we're now on turn three. So command points cost double. And the Ultramarines have kept two command points back to allow a reroll if Gulliman's killed to get him to stand back up again. So the squad of intercessors here have fallen back. Uh, try and make sure that they stay close to objective five because if they can kill these guys, they'll win it. And of course they can shoot with a minus uh, because they are Ultramarines. The Storm Talon's still in hover mode. Really want to kill this. Oh, that was a dog shaking. And the Repulsor has moved forward. Gulliman fancies his chances against the Demon Prince and he's being supported by the Captain and the Lieutenant. Obviously not man enough to do it on his own. So that is the end of the movement. Let's do some shooting. We're part way through the shooting phase and they fired everything they possibly can now, and the sergeant is still alive there. He's sat in area area terrain, so he's just helped him out with the save a little bit. The Leviathan is down to one wound. And Alex has been trying to decide what does he need to do. So he's firing the assault cannons at this to try and finish it off, and the Laz cannons at the Sakara, which is relatively undamaged. So he's just rolled 12 shots to hit with the assault cannon, and he has got, he's within the, the reroll bubbles, and he's got 11 hits. So now looking to wounds on fives, but rerolling, so two so far. So that's six. Mm -hmm. There's AP minus one. Yep. So this has got a two up armor save, so we're looking for a three up save. And I failed two. If I'd only failed one, I would use my remaining command points, but mm. um, no, it's dead. Does it explode? It doesn't. So it's finally dropped. So that's the end of the shooting phase. The Leviathan is gone. And the Demon Prince is on three wounds. And then the last cannons from here shot down and I'm down to six wounds. So I'm slightly diminished. Starting to feel like the tide is turning back in the favour of the Ultramarines a little bit, but uh, we'll see. Gulliman is going to try and charge in though, I think. So we've completed the that. charge phase and these two guys have made it in. Gulliman and the Captain are in. Uh, so the Demon Prince's days look like they might be numbered because he's only on three wounds. So let's do Gulliman's attacks. Two's re-rolling. It's all hits. All hits. Then it's strength seven or eight, but either way, it's D three mortal wounds there. Okay, so the uh, strength what? Sorry. A uh, strength. I think it's plus. Yes, yeah, plus two strength eight. Sorry. So, so strength eight. So three will that be wounds anyway. So that's two D three mortal wounds. So as well as two D three because I can't do anything about those. So he's dead. He's dead because he's only got three wounds, and that's the end of that fight. The demon prince is dead. That is slay the warlord. So at the end of the assault phase, as predicted, the uh, the sergeant, the I don't know what they're called, champion from the Chaos Space Marines is dead, and Gulliman has consolidated forward this direction towards the closest enemy. So that's it for turn three, the first half. But we do need to have a quick look at what the scores on the doors are. So starting. At, at this point there's four points on the table scored by the ultramarines they've got a fifth point for slay the warlord and they're starting to defend objective five they have scored emperor's retribution because that was objective five and they score d3, d3 for that yeah. just the one for that one yep did you want to use your last two cards <laughs> to be well? no no no, no okay no. <laughs> and throwing away secure objective six so that just leaves behind enemy lines in his hand and defend objective five, which he may score in his, in my turn. So also at the end of the Space Marine turn, 
uh, I completed defend objective six, so I'm now on 13 points. Um, I've now pulled defend objective one, and I've got two secure objective ones. There's a lot of points sunk into that one. And I've pulled no prisoners, so I've got to kill stuff. Just a reminder, objective one is this one here, currently held by Gunnerman and the captain. And my closest unit is a five-man Chaos Space Marine squad. don't think I'm going to go for that, so I'm going to start throwing those cards away. And realistically, I don't think I'm going to be able to score any more points in this game. Uh, because as the numbers of cards that we pull drops, and I can only dis discard one per turn, I think I'm going to struggle. So now it's about killing stuff. So at the end of my movement phase for turn three, these guys have moved forward into rapid fire. I need to try and hurt some of these guys. There's no way I can stop them from defending objective five because these guys have got multiple wounds each. But I can start putting some hurt on. I've just moved these forward ever so slightly. I'm not in rapid fire range yet if I target these guys. I want to try and pull the Storm Talon down. So the Sakaran's going to fire up there. The Chaos Lord has charged forward. He's got an 8 inch charge when we get to that phase. And motoring down the road is the Rhino with one squad. I jumped one squad out and hid them in the building just in case Secure Objective 6 comes up. And it's also a sneaky line breaker. So let's try some shooting. See if I can kill a few of these pesky Ultramarine dudes. Uh, puppy's back again. <laughs> So that's the end of the shooting phase. I did nothing whatsoever other than a handful of wounds to the Storm Talon. Can't do anything more. Both of my, most of my teeth have been pulled. The Sakaran was really unlucky, but hey, that's how it goes. Um, the only thing I have left to do is to try and assault this dude down here. So let's do that now whilst we're still filming. So Overwatch. Overwatch. Rerolling. Re One move. Uh. Yep, one wound. AP minus anything? Nope. So that's yep. a save. And it's an 8 inch charge. Let's see if I can make it. I have no re rolls left, no command points. And I don't. I'm sat in the open. Closest model, probably. Don't fancy his chances. So that's the end of turn three. And whilst I'm here, I didn't score no prisoners. I didn't score defend objective one or secure objective one. Um, so I'm going to throw away Defend Objective 1, uh, but the Ultramarines did Defend Objective 5, so that's two points for them. So cards for the Ultramarines, they've still got behind enemy lines. They pulled Assassinate, character in the open, don't fancy it, and then Priority orders received, so Gulliman needs to get big game hunter, so he needs to kill something with 10 wounds or more. So he's here, and he's pre-measured, there is a chance he can move and charge and then kill this Rhino. But there's also the Sakaran over there, and the Rhino over there. But he really needs to score it, because he needs to be able to pull new cards next turn. So let's see what happens as we go into the movement phase. Okay, this game is turning fast. Um, Gulliman has moved forward. He's got an eight inch distance to reach this, but you only have to get within an inch, so that's a seven when it comes to a charge, and he gets plus one to his charge range. So he's only gonna need a six to reach. These guys have moved a tiny little bit. The uh, Repulsor has moved back to make sure that the Chaos Lord is the closest model. So they're gonna try and deal with him. And the Storm Talon has jumped across, still in hover mode, and it's going to be scoring behind enemy lines. And he's positioned him in such a way that for next turn, if he wants to go back into flying supersonic, he can head straight down and deal with the squad that's scoring line break down there. It's a good tactical play here. So let's see what happens as we go straight to shooting. <coughs> So that's the end of the shooting phase, and that squad's been taken down to two. The Sakara has been destroyed, but it did explode. Thank you, Django, for the grumbling snores. Um, that's the dog, by the way, not my opponent. Um, but it did explode and caused two mortal wounds to the Storm Talon. 
and over here everything unloaded and the chaos lord is on one wound remaining so that is the end of the shooting phase so as we go into the charge phase gulliman needs a six to reach here he's failed now you have two command points left so you could re-roll one of those dice if you like yeah let me roll the one Told you it was going to be a three. Did you hear me whisper it? Three. So he failed the charge. And then over here, both these guys, or is it just one? Uh, Lieutenant first. Yeah. So he's yeah. failed. And Captain. Captain. Oh. He's failed as well. Obviously the, the raptors, sorry, the night lords are still too scary to be assaulted. That's the end of this turn. Okay, so behind enemy lines is scored. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to score the priority order of Big Game Hunter, and Alex has decided to throw away Assassinate because he thinks I'm going to hide my Chaos Lord. He might not be wrong, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So that's the end of turn four for the Ultramarines. Now it's turn four for the Night Lords. End of the Night Lords movement phase. These have all pulled back. This is in hover mode, so I need to shoot it. And charge it. This rhino has moved around. I'm in rapid fire range. Shoot it. Potentially charge it. Rhino. Shoot it. Charge it. And then over here, the Chaos Lord has come forward. I tried a sneaky advance move with this squad and I needed about a four and that would have got me within three inches of that objective. And as I'm objective secured, I would have been holding that, but I didn't quite make it. So this squad of troops have jumped out of the rhino and they're going to shoot and then try and charge. And then the rhinos moved back around here to try and provide another option for line breaker if needed. So that's the end of my movement phase. I need to get some lucky shooting off and deal with this thing here. I've already reduced it a little bit, which should reduce its movement phase because I need to protect these guys. So let's shoot some girly man boys. So at the end of the shooting phase, I threw a crack grenade, I fired everything I could and did nothing. Um, and over here, I managed to get a crack grenade hit on the captain and he's down to four wounds now. So that is the end of shooting. So turn four charge phase for the Chaos Space Marines. Uh, I've got a whole heap of charges to declare. So I've got this squad that are going to be charging the captain, as is the Chaos Lord. And over here, all three of these squads are going to be charging the Storm Talon. So we'll start over here. The Chaos Space Marine squad are charging in first to try and absorb the Overwatch. No, so no hits. Um, they need a five. A five. So yep. they're in. That means the Chaos Lord can comfortably get in without any Overwatch. And then over here, we'll start with this Rhino charging through. It's going to need 12, but it's going to try and absorb the Overwatch. Two last cannons. Nope. I'm feeling lucky. I am going to roll the 12 <laughs> for my charge. Assault cannons. One, one wound. wound. Do the save. Minus one. So it failed, so taking a wound. Yep. And then a 12. Here comes the lucky 12. Almost, not quite. Um, so now the other rhino will charge. Last cannons. Nope. Assault cannons. One hit. Nothing. Nothing. So it. I don't think it can fail, to be honest. Nope. No. And then, unless. Well, even. No, you can't fail. Those guys get in as well. So I've got two units in. So let's move everybody in and then we'll resolve the actual combat phase. Okay, and at the end of that fight, the Chaos Lord easily cut down the Gravis Captain, which is good. And here, we did nothing to each other, but we're locked in combat. Um, most importantly, where I didn't think I was going to score anything more, I'm now objective secured, holding objective one, so I've scored two points. And I killed something, so that's three points, bringing me up to 16. So that's the end of my turn four. Now, what could be... The final turn for the Space Marines.
So objectives for the Ultramarines on turn 5. They still have the priority orders received and scour the skies. So that will be the jump pack Chaos Lord. His days are well and truly numbered. End of the Space Marines turn 5 movement phase and Gulliman clearly has decided everything that's Chaos must die. And he's <laughs> moving across. He's supported by the Lieutenant and the Repulsor. The intercessors here, along with the lieutenant and the ancient, are moving forward to try and tackle this as the storm talon has moved out of combat. So that's it for movement. Let's do some shooting again and see if any of the night lords can be pulled down. So end of the shooting phase. Four las weapons from the repulsor hit and destroyed the rhino in one foul swoop. That was horrid. And then over here, between the rest of the shooting and Gulliman, all of the normal Chaos Space Marines have been shot. That leaves the Chaos Lord on one wound, and he's going to be charged by Gulliman. So as we go into the charge phase, the Chaos Lord's going to throw a grenade, which he missed. So a four needed. Uh, he's getting better at this charge <laughs> stuff now. So you're in. So I've got a one wound chaos lord. I'm gonna charge them as well. Try and sling it up. Oh what with the repulsor? Yeah, just try and sling them up. Okay, does it reach? No. no. So Lieutenant you Lieutenant then. Okay, no, so he he's does. in as well. So the plan here now is he's trying to use this assault to slingshot closer down this direction in case the game continues. Hmm. Tricky stuff. Mm. Let's just quickly resolve this fight. We might as well do it whilst we're on camera. So, Gulliman. Hitting on twos. Yep. It's six is all killing. So, yeah, he's so got two, two D3 mortal dead. wounds. And he's only got one wound left. Yeah. So, he is Benito Benito. So, at the end of the turn, they've consolidated three inches to the closest model. I did hope in vain that that rhino was closer, but unfortunately it wasn't. So, they're on the move. Um, not scored priority orders received, but he has scored Scour of the Skies for killing the Chaos Lord. Do you want to throw away priority orders, or are you going to keep it in case you get down here? Because that's worth a kill point. No, what do you think? Getting get rid of it? Yeah, Hope for something better? Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of the first half of turn five. So my objectives are hold the line, so three units in my deployment zone. I've only got three units, and two of them are right over there. And secure objective five, which is here. So I've got no chance of scoring those. Uh, so it's now straight into movement. What do I do? What do I do? I'm thinking this thing to shoot and charge this to hold it back so it can only fall back if the game goes on, to keep some of his long range firepower out of out of sight and I'm thinking to move this one back over here maybe jump the guys in next turn if the game goes on we'll see let's have a look so I've completed my move and the vehicle has retreated into there to try and make things difficult these guys are just staying put where they are and as expected the rhino here moved around so that's it for movement. And for the shooting phase, I have limited shooting. All I have is the combi bolters firing at hit. So I might as well do them here. Four shots, hitting with two, looking for fives, no wounds. So let's just go straight in. Do I charge? Yeah. Yeah, can't fail. But we do have some overwatch. Two last cannons. No, thank God for that. Uh, oh, crikey. Four hit, five hit, hello. Ooh, three wounds. Three wounds, AP minus one. Four ups. So I take another wound. And then for the actual attacks themselves, so I've got three attacks, looking for sixes, hit twice. Uh, then looking for threes, no fours to wound, one wound made. Mm -hmm. but actually did a whole point. Mm -hmm. That was an unexpected bonus. 
And then you get to attack back. He's down to two attacks now. Or one attack even. Nope. Nope. So that's it. That's the end of turn five. I don't score any points. Does the game continue? On a one or a two, it ends. <gasps> game over. Let's tally up the points. So, just looking at the points, we have 17 points to the Night Lords and 11 to the Ultramarines. Both sides scoring line breaker right at the end. Um, if it had gone on to turn 6, I don't think anything would have changed. If it had gone on to turn 7, there's a chance that there would be more down here and might have managed to kill this. So, I'm glad that it didn't go on. <laughs> really enjoyed that. Mm. Thank you, Alex. Game over.